What's up you guys, it's Two Bricks, and I have a brand new mock to show you guys today. It's the Stinger Mantis from Jedi Fallen Order. Officially, it's a Letero Spaceworks uh, S161 Luxury XL Yacht, which is a long way to say it's the hero ship from the game Jedi Fallen Order, and I've built it to the same scale as my Millennium Falcon, which is to say roughly half minifig scale, or um, what LEGO would probably consider a little bit larger than their uh, playset scale. Um, as you can see, I'm having a lot of trouble fitting the whole thing in the frame. The thing is absolutely huge. Um, and this is something that I'm going to be eventually uh, translating into um, instructions that can be purchased and made for you guys. There's a ton of features that I want to get through and show you about this mock. So um, let's just dive right in and take a look at it. And just before we get into the features, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a scale comparison. Uh, starting from the left here is my own Millennium Falcon um, Ultimate Playscale mock. There is the teeny itty bitty little um, Stinger Mantis that I made for my Microfleet series. And on the right is an official Lego Kylo Ren's shuttle extended to its full height. So you can see that uh, the model is, it's obviously um, uh, way longer, you know, this way, but it's also quite a bit taller as well. So that just gives you a rough idea for those of you guys who might have any of these sets or models lying around in your house. And before we get into the hero ship, I just wanted to show you guys the hero himself. This is Cal Kestis, or at least my take on it. Um, he's got his classic poncho, of course and uh, slightly just adapted his lightsaber to give it a little bit of a um, kind of extension there just with an extra stud on the hilt and he's sporting uh, BD-1 hanging out on his shoulder there like he does in the game and I've just very simply achieved that with uh, just this little you know back plate with the, the bar extension on it and then here's my tiny little BD-1 um, he actually does stand you know he's he's a little yeah he's a little robot just runs around and helps you out and um, discovers things in the environment and stuff. He's a great little companion. So there he is. And of course, if you guys are interested in BD-1, I have a whole video where I did a midi scale, uh, larger version of him, uh, which is quite a bit more uh, detailed than these three pieces <laughs> can allow. Um, and then underneath, I just have a simple, um, I believe this is a Han Solo uh, torso. And then this is, um, I wanna say from Jurassic World, this is um, Chris Pratt's character's legs. Um, yeah, so pretty simple cow. Um, oh, and of course the poncho is from the newest uh, Luke Skywalker that came with the uh, Obi-Wan's uh, hut set. Or no, I'm sorry, it, this was from the um, Landspeeder that we got, which was a great little set. <laughs> so there's Cal and BD-1. All right, guys, so I wanted to start you off on the outside at the front. Uh, yes, this does have a full interior as well, and we'll be taking a look at that. Um, but I think that this um, windshield section and the kind of inverted cockpit it's a really, really cool part of the design, and I worked really hard to capture the shape, very specific shape of these windows uh, on the side here, and also to get that nice, um, you know, glass front there to feel accurate to the game with like the staggered um, kind of window frames in there, and then the clear glass panes to give it a really nice transparent look. Uh, no glass on the side here, but um, that's just, you know, it's a pretty narrow <laughs> window, and I feel like it's, it's forgivable. Um, and then under the kind of front of the cowl here, there's this, uh, these double laser cannons, which I guess uh, give the stinger its name. It can, you know, sting anybody who's chasing it with a couple of those laser cannons. Uh, and those are used a good effect in the game, uh, in a cutscene at least. So that's something that's cool. And then uh, moving back down here, we see the uh, entrance ramp, which uh, there's one of on both sides. I can show you guys that. Whoop. So there you go. So in the game, depending on where the ship has landed, you can use either boarding ramp, uh, whichever one is most convenient. And of course you have this long underside section here that goes all the way back. And in the game it's kind of uh, it's kind of tilted in a little bit this way. And I've just had I just have kind of a stepped look with the plates um, getting lower or getting further away from us as I go down to kind of cheat that look. Um, and then I just have this little indented section here, which in the game it has this kind of uh, I don't it's it looks different in in every. Um, in every iteration of the ship, there's like some have a, this is a light gray area, some have it as almost white, uh, but there's definitely some kind of an indentation of this shape in here, so I wanted to convey that. Um, of course, the ship has this really striking white and uh, blue color scheme, uh, which is the default color scheme that comes in the game. Um, so I've tried to be as faithful to that as possible and trying to replicate the way that it kind of curves around and tucks underneath. Um, Give, making sure that I've maintained all of that all the way through. And then of course, up this huge sail uh, wing here, I've tried to be really faithful as well to the markings. And um, cause you know, it's a very 
uh, recognizable kind of a ship design. Probably not the thing that you you want in a ship that you're escaping the Empire in for it to be recognizable, but it, <laughs> nevertheless, it has a really uh, unique color scheme. And I really like that. So the other thing I try to do is to make sure that the windows in the ship are actually represented by real windows that you can look through. So down in here, you can see, um, well, if there were lights on inside, you could see the kitchen in there. And this little window right here uh, actually does go through and can let light through. So, um, you know, if I was to ever want to shoot some video on the inside of the ship, I would be able to kind of have exterior lights and I should be able to see something in there at least. So that's cool. So moving on down towards the back of the ship, you can see this uh, single large engine out here, which was a really, really tricky shape to capture, especially because it has this kind of hollow fin section down here that comes to a, a point right here where there's a, this big ring at the front and there's nothing behind there. So you can just kind of see those, those little vent shapes in there. Um, so that was something that was tricky to capture, but I think I did a fair, a fair crack at it. And I really like the, um, the way that this back section turned out. I normally don't do this kind of broken up, uh, you know, plates uh, all leaning in design for engines. Uh, I tend to not like the way that those look, but the Stinger Mantis actually does have uh, this kind of configuration of, um, you know, different flaps that can, I guess, adjust angles. Um, so you could adjust those if you wanted to. Uh, but what I like about the way that this turned out is that with all of the, the way that these are configured, you can bring them all together and they rest against that uh, inner blue core and they just um, come together in a nice uniform shape. So you don't have to constantly fiddle around with these to get them to be right. Um, it's the same design across all three. So yeah, I feel like that worked out really well. Um, looking back here, you can see that there's this nice grill detail that is included in the game. And um, when you're kind of walking around your ship, you can see uh, I have the landing gear pretty much correctly oriented. There's a single leg down at the front, and then there's these two under here that fold out of the middle section. And um, yeah, those support the ship fairly well. That's one area of the thing that I would actually like to improve upon a little bit is the stability of those landing struts, but um, they're good enough for now. And then when I open this up back here, you can see I just have a single clip to hold on to a lightsaber or something like that. I just had a little bit of extra space back here and I wanted to make use of it. Um, so let's see, when I go around to the other side, you can see that uh, I do have the undersides of plates for this back wing. It's the same design mirrored. Uh, it's just that you see the undersides of the plates, which some people don't like, but I actually don't mind it, especially at this scale. Um, I feel like when you step back, you know, it's such a large structure that I feel like you don't really, at least for me, it doesn't take away too much from the aesthetics of it. So um, you can make it that what you will. But um, the other part that I, I kind of had to compromise on that um, isn't super fun is that this kind of section of the uh, the big kind of round rotating portion is cut out uh, and that's to allow the wings to be able to transform like they do in the game. Yes, this actually can do that. Um, I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Um, there's a little mechanism that allows you to kind of unlock the wings and freely move them and get them into the position that you would like to have. So yeah, that's that. Um, the landing here uh, is retractable and um, I'm going to have to kind of reposition to show you guys that, but um, uh, actually both uh, landing gears do retract away fully. So yeah, that's something that uh, I had to work really hard to make that happen. And hopefully um, I'm still kind of testing out the design for durability for, uh, for long periods of time, but hopefully it, it holds out. So we'll, I'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, and then so we're just back around to the front here again, the same design mirrored through both sides, like I said and it's time to take a look on the inside. All right, guys, so this entire top lid section right here all comes off in one go. You know how I like to do that. And you can see here now uh, the windows through there, there's that one, and there's this one at the front, which is just uh, glass. It's just kind of, well, not glass, but you know, <laughs> see-through plastic uh, held in place like that. And um, this is just a sideways mounted window back here. Um, fairly easy technique, but um, super accurate to the game. And the positioning of where the window comes down uh, on the interior is actually accurate as well. So let me uh, start here up at the front. Um, you guys can see I have the accurate kind of cockpit set up where you have, uh, sorry, it might be tough to get some of the angles in here, but I'll do my best. Uh, we have the seat here for Grease, the captain of the ship, to be able to sit at. And here is the seat where you, uh, your character Cal, will take a seat when uh, it's time to come in and land. 
And then I also have the two seats back here. Uh, this one is not typically occupied. And then the one on this side, which is for um, your mentor character. Uh, and I forgot her name. Um, <laughs> Uh, Seer. Uh, this is the seat where Seer would sit. Um, and yeah, I tried to just include a little bit of some couple of lights, uh, and, you know, just kind of uh, integrated into the panels there as best I could. There's a little blue one back there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, and then Cal just has this nice little console in front of him. And you can see just how much light you're getting through these windows and you know how clear that all worked out to be. So I really like that because sometimes, depending on the pieces that you use, Lego windows can get pretty cloudy. So I'm pretty happy with how that all turned out. Um, and then this little console is uh, adjustable forward and back, and he's got his little uh, steering yoke in here, and then this is a targeting computer. Um, the captain will do the gunning and the piloting. Since he has four arms, he can do both. Um, and then the seat actually does rotate like it does in the game. And there's actually enough room for Cal to sit in there side by side with uh, whoever the captain figure is going to wind up being. I actually don't have a Grease figure right now. Um, so the seat is just held in there with a single stud that just keys into this hole right here. And that's what uh, enables it to rotate. But it gives it the, uh, the exact right spacing for your character to sit. And let me show you what Cal looks like sitting in the seat. And there's Cal sitting in his pilot seat right now, or uh, sorry, passenger seat. And I just placed the BD1, BD1 up there just to look down on them. Uh, and one thing that you will notice, unfortunately, is that there isn't enough room for Cal to sit. Uh, his head does poke above the surface right there. Uh, that was something that's unavoidable just due to the scale and um, the way that the whole kind of front window structure is built. Um, I needed to have a certain uh, level of elevation, which is actually accurate to how it is in the game anyway. Uh, but yeah, that does mean that unfortunately Cal uh, would have to I don't know, maybe you could remove his uh, his hair and he might fit. Uh, let's see. Eh, it still pokes up a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's something that could potentially be done about that where I could um, kind of make this portion uh, of the design more hollow. Um, although, again, structurally, I'm not sure how easy that would be to accomplish. But it's something that I'm thinking about and that bugs me. And <laughs> when things bug me, I like to try to solve them. But uh, let's move on back to the next section of the ship. All right, so moving back, and you can see that I've placed Cal in the kind of uh, more of the passenger side of the um, the whole ship. And you can see through here, there's the cockpit we're just taking a look at. Uh, and then down here in the center, I have a representation of the hollow table uh, where you can select the planet that you would like to go to next. And you can actually rotate this around depending on where you want to go. Uh, let's say we want to go to Kashyyyk. So put the green one in the front. So you can just simulate that there and then there's the two uh, orange uh, kind of rounded couches that uh, sit on either side of that um, spoilers for the game but uh, later on in the story you'll see another crew member sitting there who again i don't have represented um, but yeah if you guys haven't completed it yet i don't want to ruin anything uh, so here you can see those doors that i was pointing out before those are in here uh, unfortunately these windows uh, again just for structural reasons i wasn't able to get those to actually be transparent like all the others um, but I do at least have representations on both sides for the glass so you can see where the windows are uh, in the forward and back section. Um, so then moving back a little bit, you can see that there's a second kind of uh, more comfortable seating area for people to sit around and have a conversation. And there's a little table with a light, kind of a light up center to it. Um, uh, and then on top of that, there's this little breakfast kind of or eating area. Um, this is a little representation of one of the vents in the ship. And uh, if you've played the game all the way through, you'll know that uh, at some point there's a little creature that takes up residence inside of the ship. And so I just wanted to call that out with a little entrance way there into the vents. Um, and then also on this side, we can see the, the, uh, the botanists kind of area where as you progress through the game, you collect seeds from the different planets that you go to and you can grow alien plants in your ship. So this player has been particularly diligent and has collected all of them. Uh, so good job to that person. Uh, and then in here you can see these are actually Grease's personal collection of plants. Uh, he has a couple growing, one here and one there, uh, which I believe he uses for his cooking. Uh, Grease is a man of many, many talents. Uh, and then I just have these kind of classic uh, round Star Wars lights that you always see, these kind of double ye yellow lights that are in almost every spaceship, I feel like. Um, so I just wanted to have those one on either side there as well. Uh, and then back here you can see there's a galley, uh, which is very faithful to how it looks in the game. 
there's these kind of large uh, food dispensary items back here, and then there's a stack of there's cups and also plates in the game. And I just wanted to have somebody's little uh, cup sitting on there. And then on the top here, there's this little microwave looking thing. And then a couple of these kind of jars of dried food, what kind of looks like breakfast cereal um, sitting back there. And then back again on this side. So this would be the vent where uh, you can look up sometimes and you can see your little creature um, sitting inside of there. He can sometimes be seen popping up. So again, I wanted to just make a reference to that because um, I think that's a cute little feature. Um, I also wanted to keep the interior accurate to the layout in the game, so you have a couple of steps that you go up to get to the kitchen. And then there's these two little very narrow uh, seats back here for the breakfast nook, and that is actually, uh, again, how it is represented in the game. They're pretty, pretty small, um, just the bare minimum, and this could be like a little, some kind of, I don't know, bottle of hot sauce or something. <laughs> Who knows what that is? Uh, some kind of little food item. So. Uh, this is all very accurate to how it is in the game and you know going from front to back you can really get the sense of how it was in the video game. Um, and then there's this doorway through here where you can see the corridor does continue back there. Um, it's really hard to see down in there but it, uh, you, it takes a left corner. There's actually uh, an open wall and then there's a gap through there that you can see the characters would be able to go back around. Um, unfortunately I don't have any of the remaining corridors or anything that lead to the hyperdrive and Cal's sleeping area because um, all of that is taken up by the central rotating structure of the wings. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are saying that it's impossible for this wing structure to exist the way that it does in the game, but I actually don't think it is impossible. I think that there's these kind of round, um, sort of round panels that the wings are attached to, which are on some sort of a track. And you can see uh, kind of hints of the track on uh, in the actual in-game model as well which I think um, those just kind of rotate around a hollow uh, shell and move the wings up and down. Now, I'm not sure, of course, how possible that would be <laughs> with um, actual Earth-based engineering techniques, but, uh, you know, Star Wars has all kinds of tricks up its sleeve for crazy things like that. So um, let me just place the lid back on and just give you guys a final look. Uh, so you can see here this nice kind of greeble detail that goes all the way from the front um, all the way back and then through these kind of vents right here and all the way up into the wing where there's a lot of additional detail as well. And it goes all the way up here. There's a little light which actually is represented in the game. And actually there's a couple of lights. There's a, a red one on this side and matches on the other side too, which I noticed on the in-game model as well. So try to... Uh, Try to replicate as much of the detail as humanly possible in these things. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate how you guys can uh, work with the landing gear and also the wing mechanism. So here are the three legs under here, and you can see that uh, this one is just made of hinged joints. So you can just hinge that in, and it becomes a part of the kind of circular design of the underside of the ship. So that works out really well. And then uh, back here, they have these little flaps so you can open up. And then this front leg just retracts in We'll put that in upside down and then these just close over it they don't close down all the way but they uh, kind of pinch that in place so it's nice and low profile when it's tucked away and then with that uh, done you're free to uh, open up the wings so back here uh, this is a slider that uh, is connected to a couple of pins which are holding both wings in place right now so what i like to do is i just place a finger under here and then uh, pull this just pull this forward so you can see now it's in the uh, unengaged position and then this whole bottom wing here can just come down and the entire the entire wing is now able to is now able to freely rotate and it takes the bottom wing with it and then when you want to freeze it in position uh, you can just hold <laughs> sorry it's really hard to do this you can just hold this wing in place and then lift this one up and it will uh, separate freely and you can just slide that back in that pin right there and then that locks the wings back into place so there you go and then I can just pop the landing gear back out so this just goes forward flaps back down and then these just open up really really simply and you can now just place the ship back down on the table like so oh yeah one other thing that I forgot to mention is that if you wish you can actually lock the, the you can push this pin back in and lock the wing in its uh, outward position like this and it's, you totally can pose it like that and switch it around. Or you can unlock this again and you can go back up to the top position 
and you can lock the top wing in place so that you can uh, fly it around like in the game, but this bottom wing will be loose, but it will just kind of hang down, and then you can, uh, you can get this look like it's flying, which you do get in the game. So that's super useful as well. And just track that back in, push this back up, and re-engage. So there you go. So there you go, guys. That is the Stinger XL class luxury Lateran Spaceworks yacht. Uh, from Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, it was a really, really fun and enjoyable build to try to capture. Uh, there were some parts of this design that I almost feel like were destined to be made in LEGO and other parts that I felt like uh, <laughs> they were deliberately trying to make something that was impossible to design in LEGO. So it was a really interesting, unique challenge. Um, like the whole front section went together in uh, virtually no time at all. And then the back section just became this huge engineering structural nightmare to try to accomplish. Um, but I'm really glad that I managed to get it in the end. I think this uh, is a really faithful representation of what we see in the game. And I was a huge fan of the game, so I'm really glad to be able to have this. And um, yeah, I just hope that eventually LEGO does get around to giving us a set or two so we can get some official figures because um, my collection of minifigures is not that ginormous that I can just uh, really easily cobble together um, satisfactory uh, purest figures from the game. So yeah, hopefully we get that at some point. That'd be really cool. Um, certainly I think there's going to be a Jedi Fallen Order 2, so maybe when that comes around we'll get something uh, from LEGO. So yeah, if you guys are interested in the instructions, please do hold on tight. Uh, those are going to be coming at some point. Um, I'm actually working from home right now, and a lot of the same equipment that I use for my work from home setup is also used, uh, shared with my work setup. So it's a little bit of an extra step to go between the two and um, a little bit more cumbersome for me. So I am slightly slowed down in my capacity right now for uh, instruction making, but I definitely, I mean, the reason that I made this was to be able to create a model that I could share with you guys. So that is definitely going to get done. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please do leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if I showed you everything that you wanted to see. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a follow-up video on this to give you guys a look at any of the changes that I made once I do the instructions. And um, yeah, if you guys uh, have anything that you didn't get to see, I'll show you on the follow-up. So uh, let me know down below. Uh, thank you guys again for all the support, uh, for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel and I really do appreciate it. So thank you guys once again. I'll get to work on the next video and may the force be with you. Thank you.